Welcome to Ivy Creates. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss video when they come out on Thursdays. Also, please leave a comment because I love to read your comments and get to know a little bit about you. So thank you so much in advance for watching and spending your time with us. So today I'm going to be doing a sign. The first thing I'm using is Dixie Bell Caviar and I'm using um, this Houston Astros sign that they had for $1.99 on clearance at uh, Hobby Lobby and you can find round signs like this just about anywhere but I wanted to use this one because I was going to make it look like a tire so I start with using my Dixie Bell Caviar to cover this up because I don't need any of that. I, I bought a bunch of um, these type, you know, uh, chipboard or what do you call it? Not melamine, it's the other one. MDF board. Um, signs and things at Hobby Lobby during the clearance so that it would be so yeah, Hobby Lobby had a bunch of this type things on clearance and I bought them. Um, I buy these things also at the Dollar Tree anytime that I find you know, they have something that's large and I might be able to repaint and make into something else. So I'm just going around with a couple of coats of the Dixie Caviar, making sure that I get all around the edges and around the, the outside edges of the sign. Thank you for joining me today. I'm very glad you're here. Um, glad you've spent the time with me. I enjoy doing these projects and I hope that you follow along or you try them yourself. If you do, please leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Um, leave me a comment below. Tell me what you think about this project. I'm now doing the inner wall of the tire. And of course I was trying to make it look kind of white wall like my little red truck. I'm going to be using a little red truck on this um, sign on the back, you know, as the front part, as you can see in the bottom corner. And that is actually from the Dollar Tree, and it is a placemat. And I've had lots of love lately with placemats. Um, placemats and napkins, because placemats are usually, and this one in particular is like a vinyl material, very usable for just about anything. And you can cut the pieces out and like my handwriting's horrible so if I find something that has good little sign on it or something I can cut that out I can use them as backgrounds all kinds of cool things so yes the truck is a Dollar Tree placemat and I cut the truck out of the placemat and painted that and you'll see more of it as we get closer to the finish just kind of getting it dry with my heat gun and the Dixie Bell I use the cotton and the caviar and they you know cover greatly um, what I'm going to use for the center is the a color that kind of matches the little truck center caps and uh, this is just a paint that I mixed up in my paint pots and it is Americana of course and I do mix my own little paints in the paint pots and I, I prefer them that way. It's so much easier to work with. I'm very, very stingy with the amount of paint that I use <laughs> on just about everything because I don't know why I hoard paint. I literally hoard it. So now you can see I'm putting a second coat on because the first coat didn't quite get what I wanted it to do. And the funny thing about this is when I put the truck on, it covers this completely up. But it's under there and I know it's there, so it's all good. So now I go back and I do um, a second coat on the white.
I just wanted to make sure that none of the Houston Astros signs shone through. Alright, I've dried it off um, using my little heat gun that you can pick up at any hardware store. And I'm going to put the truck down onto the tire backing. Okay, first I want to do some more details in the truck. I didn't really, you know, it was shiny, it's plastic looking. And I also, you know, thought of this option of adding this truck that I gotten from Hobby Lobby, but I chose the Dollar Tree truck because it was just better. And um, so I do add some more details to the truck itself. And I was trying to decide and figure out exactly where I wanted to set it. So once I got where I wanted to set it, I didn't move it much. I wanted to glue it down and get it on there. So I just pressed it and kind of rolled it a little bit with the pin and that was mainly to make sure that the glue was not too raised and that it was really spread out on the bottom and I was just waiting for it to cool down a little bit the glue didn't the glue gun didn't have to be super super hot um, you know you don't want it to melt the stuff it's like a vinyl kind of material um, almost like you'd have on a vital, vinyl flooring or something. That's what they make the placemats out of. So you can see now that it's on the tire and it's all um, glued to it and not going anywhere. And you can see it's just a, a round MDF board. That's all it is. So now I'm going to take out my paints and kind of go over some of the more of the details. Uh, I wanted to make sure because initially being a placemat is very shiny and everything and I'm not really a shiny girl. I like things to be matte uh, as much as possible unless they're really meant to be real shiny. So I take the little welcome, the metal welcome sign that I found at Dollar Tree and um, I wanted to paint that one white so it would stand out more because it wasn't standing out against the tire so I did it like a cream and white color together so it's it's not a hundred percent white but it's pretty close so I just painted over that to let it dry so you could see it and that was just a simple little metal welcome sign that I found at the Dollar Tree I was happy to finally have found the metal at the Dollar Tree. Please like and subscribe and share this video if you find any value in it. Um, I would appreciate it. And a little comment below so that I know that you liked it or whatever your comments may be or if you have any suggestions or um, perhaps you have a project you would like me to try. I would love to be able to do that and talk with you about whatever projects you like. So now I'm using Chalk Country and this is a summer wheat and it's just kind of a creamy color and it's very gritty so it kind of goes with the details that I'm using. It's got a very textured surface to the paint. Which I've, I've come to like. At first I was like no this is not Dixie Belle but it definitely has its place and I definitely enjoyed it. Now here I was kind of toying around with the idea of maybe changing the color of the truck. Um, but I decided against it and brought my Dixie Bell, what is that, Rustic Red back out and to paint, paint over it again. So I'm using the Dixie Bell Rustic Red. Nothing beats a Dixie Bell paint. Now this had, um, on the placemat, it had a baskets of apples out in front of it, which I cut off and fixed the fender to look like it didn't ever have that there. But it also had baskets of apples in the back of the truck. And I kind of wanted to keep those, you know. Um, I thought it was really cute, even, of course, we can't grow apples here in the south, but um, I thought it was cute anyways. 
So I'm just going back over trying to detail as much as I can on this. And the good thing is, is you don't have to be an artist. You don't have to be uh, drawing anything because this is already done. All you have to do is go over the colors and make them closer to what you want or brighter or different. You don't even have to do that really. You could have just glued the truck on and been done with it. But that's just me. I have to put my own personal touches on everything. So now I've got the uh, the summer wheat going over with that and then I used a gray, what is it called? I think it's called country road chalk country paint. So the summer wheat and the chalk and the country road are chalk country paints. Chalk, chalk country finishes is the name of the company that you know that makes them. I think it's a carriage house website or something to that effect. I'll have to look and see. I might link it in there later. Um, so now I'm just going back over like the details and the shadows, some of the shadows of the fenders and of the tires and everything like that. And this again, the Chalk Country Finishes Country Road is a more textured, gritty kind of uh, paint, you know, where the Dixie Belle is very flat, very soft feeling. So when I painted over with the Dixie Bell, of course I covered up a lot of the little details. So I'm just going back and adding them back in with this uh, country road paint. I hope y'all are doing well today. It's hot as it can be outside and we've been we've had rain here for the last four days I believe uh, four or five days since uh, there was a little tropical storm or a hurricane Hannah that went into Texas but I'm in Mississippi Gulf Coast and we have just had rain after rain after rain it's been uh, you know something else I think we're caught up now because we were in a drought but we're probably caught up pretty good now so now I'm just going back, adding some more white details from my paint pots with the Americana paints. it was really really good and dry add a little bit more of the the paint and here's the thing about this particular when I pulled out this Dixie Bell rustic red I want to explain something I usually use paint in the lid almost always or on the cover that is below the lid and I don't know what happened. I really don't like shaking up paint for this particular reason because it got all in the lid, all over the sides, everywhere. And, and when I opened it, it ended up being all over my hands. So I wiped everything down really good and I went and got some Vaseline and went around the rim of the paint so that the cap would close really good because if you get paint all around the rim of the paint bottle, it ends up getting stuck and you can't get it open. So I put Vaseline around that to keep it from doing that. Um, so that's what I was doing a minute ago, was trying to fix the darn paint, and I don't know how it ended up that way. But I hate shaking paint for that reason. Okay, so now I'm using a pen that is a silver pen, and kind of just highlighting some of the areas that would have been chrome. And you can't really tell in this lighting that it makes a difference but it's like a permanent chalk silver pin and it does make a little bit of a difference on it it kind of highlights some of the areas so then after that I went and I got my sharpie gel pen and you know I love sharpie I do and 
I've got my Sharpie gel pen and it writes really smoothly and it makes me happy. So I started going to the fine line details um, that you would need to go over uh, with my Sharpie gel pen. And usually I am using that for writing in my notebooks and stuff, but it worked really, really well and I was really happy with it because I use cord Sharpies too. <laughs> So I'm going in because I had just put red down on the in the baskets in the back of the truck and so I'm going in adding the detail to make them look like apples again because some of the they had one or two baskets of apples and then they had baskets of other things I just made it all apples See, I'm just kind of lining the things that need to be separate and noticeable as being separate. And here's a tip for any time that you're doing any kind of artwork. Um, it's always a good idea to turn it upside down or sideways or different areas. Um, for one thing, it helps you with how you're drawing and how you're painting or whatever you're doing and not get paint and stuff all over your arms, which I do constantly. But the other thing is, is if you turn it upside down, you get a different perspective, and if it looks good from both sides or different angles and ways that you look at it, then you're doing a good job. Because uh, you can have something, and if you don't turn it around or change the direction you see it, you might have it looking a little off. welcome sign is dry and I've got all my details back into the truck and I'm going to glue down my little welcome sign and I'm going to put a family name down at the bottom now because this is MDF if you put it on a porch I would recommend that it be out of the weather you know, like under an eave or something, not out on a porch where it's going to get too much weather because the MDF will just soak up that water and just, you know, be destroyed. So, um, you can see that. But it would be better on a covered porch or on an interior door, behind a storm door, or something like that. And we have a, um, Every October, the first two weeks of October, we have one of the largest uh, car shows for antique and um, hot rods and stuff like that. Largest in the country, if not the largest. We had over 9,000 registered vehicles last year. And it's here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, the first two weeks of October, called Cruising the Coast. So, old cars are a huge deal down here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. And, um can't you know can't do enough and that the 9,000 registered not every car that comes down here is registered so it looks like a, a completely different time period when you come down during those two weeks because it's nothing but old cars everywhere and all you know there's a lot of other type of custom cars as well but yeah come see us for cruising the coast because it is the best thing around lots of fun so this is my final product and I thought it came out really, really cute. Um, this next thing that I'm going to do is just like a little bonus. I have a friend who has a farm and she's had it. It's been in her family since her great grandfather or grandfather. I can't remember, but it's uh, a really unique farm and she has what are called Caribbean sheep and down here on the Gulf Coast as hot as it is oh my goodness sheep are you know we do have places that have them but my goodness <clears throat> so her sheep self shear she never has to shear them the wool just falls right off of them it's the strangest thing but it's pretty cool so um, she has a 60 acre farm on a river and uh, there's a section of the farm where she puts all of, because she doesn't eat or um, 
uh, harvest any of her animals. They're all pretty much pets. So there's a place called the Boneyard where things go when they're old and they've died or whatever happens to them. They go down to the Boneyard and she lets nature take its course down that way. She doesn't bury it or anything. So whatever critters come up from the river, clean the bones. And so we were walking on her property and I found a bunch of neat looking bones and I thought, oh, that would be, you know, really different to do something uh, as a wind chime or a noisemaker. And I know that sounds kind of what, <laughs> but you think about it, you use oyster shells and seashells and all kinds of things. Why wouldn't you use bones? And they are animals that she loves. So we're just recycling them as a memory for her. So um, I thought, because I do use oyster shells and seashells, I thought they'd be really hard to drill into, but come to find out they're really much a very hollow type bone system. So it was easy, easy as pie to drill through them. And I use fish and line because I do make a lot of like what I call junk chimes. Um, so I use fish and line and this is a piece of bamboo from my yard that so everything here is just totally recycled from our yards. Um, the only thing I had to use extra was of course the fish and line. And you can use any old fish and line, just not something that's too, too heavy. Um, but yeah, I just drilled ho holes in my piece of bamboo and um, I was going to use that as the topper. I think at one point I chose, I was going to use that as a topper, but I ended up using a piece of driftwood in the end and um, making that the topper part for my wind chime, whatever you want to call it. And uh, you'll see a picture at the end of what it comes out to. This is another piece of driftwood that I wrapped in copper wire and I had some of the teeth from the sheep and stuff. It's just, I know it's really macabre and everything and there's some small pieces of bamboo and smaller bone parts that I had uh, that were hollow. But you know, it's just for fun. So this is what it ended up looking like and you would never think that bones would look so pretty. But they did, they come out really nice. And so I'm giving that to my girlfriend to go in her front porch on her farm. <laughs> 